Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I wanted to come to the floor today and make just a few comments about the crisis that is unfolding before us. Right now, some colleagues here in the Senate and, and others over on the House side are holding the entire American economy hostage to make their favored point on policy. Now, I must say that this blackmail against ordinary working class Americans threatening to steal whatever momentum our economy has rather than build greater momentum and greater jobs is deeply misguided. And that's really as polite a way as I can possibly put it. Because when you think about what families have been through, working families have been through over the last few years, the deregulation of Wall Street, leading to predatory mortgages that hurt millions of families, and then securities that those were based on proceeded to derail our entire economy, hurting millions more. Families lost their savings. They lost their jobs. They lost the equity in their house. But now all that our working families are asking for is a little bit of common sense. Don't do further damage to the economy that is struggling to recover. And yet certain colleagues here in the Senate and over in the House seem to feel that the little people don't matter, the working people don't matter. The stability of the foundation for families, a living wage job, doesn't matter because they can play whatever political games they want and the only people hurt are ones that they just don't see in their life. Maybe they live in a gated community. Maybe they live in a bubble. But I see those people. I see them every day. They are the salt of the earth. They are the shop, the workshop that takes America forward. They are the small businesses across this nation. And all they're asking for is a little reasonableness and common sense. Now, some of my colleagues have said this crisis comes because the majority party in the Senate has refused to negotiate. Nothing could be further from the truth. Negotiation in the budget process starts with each side passing a budget resolution and holding a conference committee. But it is members of the minority of this chamber that have come to this floor at least 18 times to block the start of a conference committee in order to work out the budget. Now, I can't imagine in my wildest dreams why they are terrified of there being a conversation between leadership in the House and leadership in the Senate meeting with a television camera to work out the details of budget compromise. But they seem terrified, petrified, scared to death of there being a conversation between the House and the Senate that would lead to a compromise. So indeed, there has been obstruction on compromise, and we know exactly where it is. It's the same individuals who are trying to drive the cliff the economy over the cliff right now. So, moreover, members of this party said, let's go further. The Senate has a number. The House has a number. The Budget Conference Committee is being blocked. Let's simply accept the House number. Not split it down the middle. Not insist on our number. Let's take the House number. Well, that's going far beyond the middle path, if you will. That's a major compromise. So if you're looking for a compromise is happening, it's happening with the leadership of the Senate, putting forward a compromise that takes the House number for the budget. It just appears that certain individuals in this body just don't want to take yes for an answer. I'm going to conclude my remarks. I see my colleague esteemed senator from Illinois has arrived. I want to just close with this notion. This is not the first crisis that has been artificially manufactured that has damaged the American economy. Let us remember that similarly, we faced this in April 2011 with a continuing resolution. We faced a manufactured crisis with the debt ceiling in July of 2011. We faced the December 2012 fiscal cliff that did substantial damage. March of this year, continuing resolution, then bringing us up till right now. And this is not all. 
The same individuals who are threatening at this moment to drive our economy over a cliff are saying, and we'll do it again in a couple of weeks over another debt ceiling issue. And when this continuing resolution expires in a few weeks from now, if we get one done, we'll do it again a few weeks from now. Three crises in the period of just a few weeks. If you want to destroy the economy for working Americans, this is how it's done. And it's unacceptable. And we need a bipartisan, common sense caucus to come together and simply say no to those who are trying to create this terrible blackmail using American working families in the process. Thank you very much, Mr. President.